Gustave the Nile Crocodile. Gustave has lived in infamy ever since the early 2000s when he was really kind of first described. Gustave has many legends around him that the numbers are insane for a single animal. Gustave is rumored to have killed upwards of 300 people in the course of about 20 years. Now these numbers of the amount of people that Gustave had killed did not just come out of thin air. So in the 1990s, let's just say there was a lot of war in this part of Africa. In the particular part of Africa that Gustav is from is Burundi, which is a small country that is just south of Rwanda. There's a lot of very violent, terrible things going on. And a lot of people died. Sometimes bodies had to be thrown in the river. And the thought is that maybe some of these crocodiles, some of these larger crocodiles saw bodies floating in the river where they were living and decided to make an easy meal of it. So over time, the locals knew of these certain problem crocodiles. French expat Patrice Fay, I'm just going to call him Patrice after this point, had been living in this area and he was a herpetologist and he had grown to really love the area and tried to learn as much as he can about the local wildlife and all the stuff going on in this general area of Lake Tanganyika. And in 1998, he was working with some local fishermen and he was bringing stuff that he thought maybe science might want to take a look at. And he was, he was bringing all the stuff to the capital of Burundi. Well, while he was working with this fisherman, they had said that one of their colleagues had recently been killed right in front of them by this massive crocodile. On Lake Tanganyika, this crocodile was known for killing people and then just disappearing and no one knew where the crocodile went. So Patrice was pretty intrigued by this. He heard about this one particular crocodile that was particularly a nuisance, not just because of the fact that it was known to kill people, but its massive size. And it had a few distinguishing features. This crocodile had a scar on its right shoulder blade that potentially was from a spear or a hippo. They're not exactly sure, but it was a very noticeable scar along with multiple scars, again, on the left side from bullet holes. Not sure whether it was the army that was shooting at this crocodile or what, but this crocodile had a reputation for basically having bulletproof skin. It had been shot many, many times and it was still running wild. So Patrice started looking into these instances and he had followed the pattern of attacks on Lake Tanganyika going all the way back to 1987. There were a few villages that these attacks were centered around, mainly Minago, Magara, and Kenyosha. I'm probably butchering these pronunciations. I do not speak the language, but yeah, that's the best of my ability. Now, many of these people that were killed were also found mostly whole. They weren't like just completely gone. They didn't just disappear. The bodies would wash up with bits missing. Arm here, a leg here, sometimes all the arms and legs. Usually the torso would wash up for some reason. And every year, there was a period of attacks between October and February, and then the attacks would just stop. And it, every year, it was like this. In the Ruzizi National Park, there was a guide who also had kept account of this very large crocodile with the scars and everything on it. That would disappear and then reappear and they kept a log of this luckily they did because trees matched up the times that these people had marked that this crocodile had disappeared and reappeared and matched it up perfectly with the times that all of these attacks would happen and putting two and two together with all of this evidence patrice proclaimed that this crocodile was responsible for most of these deaths and that is where the 300 mark came from so at this point there's a lot of conjecture yes there is some evidence to point one direction or the other most of these people know which croc this is there are plenty of circumstantial evidence that points this particular croc to all of these things that are happening now about this time latrice was able to convince a documentary crew to come out and film the capture of this crocodile because in 1990 these particular crocodiles were protected just like lolong you cannot go in and kill these crocodiles they were given permission to capture this crocodile but 
there was about to be a power change and there was worry that there was going to be a civil war. So basically the guys in charge were like, you can come in, you can try to capture this crocodile, but you got two months because once this power change happens, I cannot promise your safety and there's good chance there's going to be a civil war. So Patrice immediately gets to work and this is where this documentary kind of starts coming in. He gets to work and he builds a 30 foot cage that weighs over a ton and it's very specifically made so that any crocodile that gets in there isn't going to be injured. Blunt um, edges are rounded off. Um, the screws are not facing inwards, they're facing outwards so that there, there's nothing that could potentially hurt this crocodile because they want to make sure that it is captured safely. They actually go and they find Gustav and some of the first ever actual evidence of this particular crocodile is filmed and the thing is massive. I mean, the very well known video of Gustav just kind of lumbering over to a hippo is filmed around this time and the hippo <laughs> looks like it's not wanting any part of this crocodile which normally doesn't happen. You can see the scars going all up and down the stomach and you can see the big scar on the shoulder blade from what looks like a spear. This crocodile is massive and after looking at this video it was estimated that Gustav was around 100 years old. That was the rumor. But looking at Gustav's teeth, the teeth were all there. They, they looked very well, very healthy. And a 100-year-old crocodile shouldn't have basically any teeth left. They estimated that Gustav was probably 50 to 60 years old at the time this was recorded in the year 2000. Now they bait this trap and they spread a bunch of cow's blood all over the front of it, drip it all over the cage because they want to get the scent in the air and then they put a whole cow's head in the back of this trap hoping that the crocodile would come in. They also put an infrared camera in the back to kind of see what was going on and actually see if A, it's the right crocodile and of course you got to get some awesome B-roll. The first night you can see that a crocodile does in fact come in front of the cage. You can see the glow of the eye shine, but nothing ever goes into this trap. An entire week goes by with no luck and getting a bit frustrated and a bit worried because time is running out. You gotta remember, they only had two months from the time they got permission. They had to design and build the cage and get everything set up. They are on the clock here and because they're so desperate they decide to go to a medicine man to try to see if they can get some local luck so to speak now this medicine man claimed that Gustav was under the spell of a very evil man and being that they really didn't have many options they decided you know what a little bit of which dr. mojo is better than nothing Though it's not quite scientific, Petris believes it's worth a try. I think that if we started, we have to go all the way. Then we'll see. But, well, you know, I, you never know in the end. It's difficult to say. Maybe there are things that they know that we don't know. So the witch doctor does a little spell, does a little dance, shakes a stick in some water, and, um uses his own dog that he wanted to get rid of his bait. I don't know about you. And there's nothing special about the dog, by the way. He just was like, here, here you go. This, this'll do. It wasn't like part of the spell. He just gave them the dog and they used it. But they figured, why not? We're not gonna say no to this guy. Luckily, the dog did end up escaping and the mojo did not work. I guess the evil man's spell was a little too strong because from here on out, it didn't get any better. Oh, I forgot to mention, as they're looking for Gustav originally, in the documentary, there's just like a torso laying on the ground and I can't show it because, you know, body parts. There was literally just a torso laying on the ground and the first time I saw it, I'm like, is that, is that really? Is that what that is? is it, that's got to be fake, right? That, and then they go, no, and then they, they sit there and they bury, and they're burying this torso of this man. No head, no limbs, just the torso. Like, this 
a crocodile and they they assume it's Gustav because it's in the area literally killed a man while they're recording and they just walk up and oh look at there's a dead body on the ground and they showed it on PBS when this thing first aired and the reason I mentioned that is because at this time as soon as the witch doctor stuff happened another person was killed by a crocodile a fisherman was killed in front of all of his fishing buddies and they claim it was Gustav. Again, I want to sit here and say every single time a crocodile is killed somebody in this, that it's Gustav because that is what they are. But there are a lot of crocodiles in this area, but they claim that it was Gustav. So that's what we got to go with right now. But the thing about this situation is that there were no body parts missing, literally. They claim that Gustav grabbed this person, drug him into the water, drowned him, and then just let him go. Which, I don't know. I mean, you can try to blame Gustav for that. That sounds a little fishy to me. If you, I mean, if you really think about it, it sounds just a tad bit fishy. Well, at this point, they try a different tactic, and they use what they would normally use for smaller crocodiles. They use, like, an improvised snare. And in this instance, they just beefed it up to hopefully catch a larger crocodile with it. And they end up catching a few smaller ones, but they do not get anywhere near the size of Gustav. After that failed, they decided to go back to their original trap, but they moved it to a different spot. This time they're gonna use other live bait. They tie a chicken on a rope and just have it dangle there to hopefully make all these sounds and attract a crocodile in. And over the next few days, you can definitely see that there's crocodiles that come by and check it out, but no crocodiles ever go in. Eventually, they were getting desperate. There was only about a week left and they decided to use a live goat. Once again, the goat attracted some crocodiles in you can see the eye shine, but no crocodile ever went into the trap fully. These crocs are just too smart, or this trap is just too obvious. Like, But then one night, a big storm goes by, and the goat is in this trap, and then the feed of the camera just shuts off. The next morning, they go, and they find this trap partially submerged. And not only is it partially submerged, but the goat is gone. Their trap is ruined. And they only have like three days left. There's not enough time for them to put another piece of bait in there. Oh, you thought they captured Gustav? No, two months ran out and they had to book it. Because I don't know about you, as much as I would like to have saved Gustav, I also don't want to get killed in somebody else's civil war. And the weird thing about this, all, there was two crocodile attacks while this documentary was being filmed. There is no sighting and no crocodile attacks six months from the time that all of this happened. So literally it went from two crocodile attacks right on top of filming this to none within six months of this happening. There were theories that Gustav had been killed, had been chased off. There was all sorts of stuff going on. And the last actual confirmed sighting of Gustav was back in 2009. There have been unconfirmed sightings of Gustav dating as close as 2015. But again, these are all unconfirmed. There's no pictures, there's nothing. It's just these are just villagers who said, oh, I saw the crocodile. Back in 2019, there was a rumor that Gustav was killed. And these are unconfirmed. You would think that if one of the deadliest crocodiles of all time was actually killed that they would have some sort of proof but there is no proof there's no pictures there's no nothing so as far as we can tell Gustav might very well still be out there and obviously something scared him enough that he didn't go about his old routes or I have another theory because later on Patrice later admitted that there were only 60 confirmed reports of people dying in this area that could be actually attributed to Gustav, not 300. I kind of believe that Patrice kind of played up the number a bit because he wanted Gustav to be captured and 60 is still a big number, but I think that so-called propaganda really did work because as much as it's a fantastic story, 
and fantastic and awe-inspiring in the um, holy crap there's a crocodile that killed 300 people like you remember that number and it keeps on getting passed down through story and story and story and the size of Gustav 25 26 feet more likely Gustav was about 18 feet there was never any official measurements he was never captured nobody knows how big he truly was and in my opinion this is just my opinion like butts we all have them i don't believe that gustav was over 20 feet long i believe gustav was probably 18 or 19 feet but he wasn't as big as low long and gustav probably killed a lot of people there's a good chance he did but there are a lot of crocodiles and a lot of big crocodiles you don't have to be 18 foot long as a crocodile to kill somebody you can be 10 foot long and there's plenty of 10 foot long crocodiles in Lake Tanganyika and the surrounding waters. So if I had to guess, Gustav did kill a good amount of people and being the largest crocodile in the area, he got the blame put on him for most of these situations. But honestly, I think while he was building this reputation, a lot of these deaths were probably due to the civil war and the genocide going on in the area. When you have a lot of bodies to get rid of, you throw them in the river. Crocodiles eat some of them and some of them you don't. It's hard to put blame on any particular thing, but to put the blame on a crocodile makes it a lot easier. And as much as I know a lot of you would probably don't want to hear the fact that I don't believe that Gustav is responsible for all of these deaths, it's just, I mean, he most definitely probably killed a few people. I am in no way, shape, or form saying that he is completely innocent, but I seriously... I seriously doubt he killed that many people. It is a fantastical story. It is something that is going to live on in my heart for a long time because it is, it's just an incredible thing to think about. But we will probably never know the answer. And I wish that Gustav was still alive, but considering how long it's been since there was a sighting and now he is known and there, he probably was killed by poachers at some point or just died of natural causes. I mean, he was a big crocodile. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope in six months from now we get a confirmed sighting. And with that, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. It has meant the world to me. The views recently have been awesome, and I hope that you guys really did enjoy this video because I've been asked over and over to do this particular video. Please comment below what story you want me to do next. I've got some videos that are going to be coming out pretty soon that are going to be more on the herping side of things. If you came over from TikTok, thank you. You guys are awesome. If you guys are just finding out about me on YouTube, well, thank you very much for watching. And go check out all my other socials, mainly TikTok. That's DNA Reptiles, DNA underscore Reptiles. Thank you guys for watching. Stay wild.